Thank you very much, Honorable Minister of Information. Um, the members of the COVID Task Force team, the Chief Executive of the Ghana Tourism Authority, um, members of the press, good morning, everybody. And I'm happy to join you this morning um, to give you information on the guidelines for the tourism and hospitality sector. The, tour the tourism, hospitality, and arts sector has been hardly hit by this COVID-19 pandemic because we all know that the sector thrives on public gathering. And to overcome the pandemic, we cannot gather. So the sector has really suffered. However, the sector also contributes significantly to the socioeconomic growth and national development of the country. Because Ghana is endowed with many natural attractions, rich cultural heritage, creative abilities, and a naturally hospita hospitable people, which contributes to the nation's potential as a preferred tourism destination. The tourism industry has made immense strides in the year 2019 with the successful implementation of the Year of Return program. International arrivals reached 1.13 million from 956372 in 2018, which is a 27% growth above that of the global average of 5% increase. The average expenditure per tourist during the period also increased from about $2,708 in 2018 to $2,931 in 2019. The increased number of travelers to Ghana positively impacted the private sector industries, such as the airlines, hotels, store operators, restaurants, arts and craft dealers, amongst others. For example, several of our hotels in the month of December registered 100% occupancy. Arts and craft dealers at our, NAS, at our arts center also <coughs> reported a doubling of their sales in 2019 compared to the year 2018, as well as our car rental services, which registered increased patronage. However, the gains have been eroded by the coronavirus pandemic. In view of the devastating effects of the COVID-19 on the sector, government has introduced interventions to ameliorate the impact on businesses. And the tourism and hospitality sector is also going to benefit from these interventions. For instance, the stimulus package of 600 million Ghana cities through the NBSSI to stimulate economic activity of businesses in the SME sector, as well as the 3 billion facility for larger businesses will also benefit the operators in the tourism and hospitality sector. Also, the ministry under the Ghana Tourism Development Project, which is a World Bank funded project, an amount of $9 million has been earmarked for interventions to boost the tourism industry. And this will be disbursed $4 million to support tourism sites and destinations development and $5 million for tourism enterprise support for SMEs within the tourism value chain. His Excellency the President has also constituted an interministerial committee to assess the impact of COVID-19 on the tourism and hospitality sector specifically and propose a stimulus package to alleviate the impact of the pandemic and protect jobs and ensure the industry recovers post-COVID-19. In order to further support the recovery of the tourism and hospitality sector, the president, in his address the last Sunday, 
is setting restrictions on the operations of the sector. And we hereby provide the guidelines in that respect for compliance by all operators. In respect of the food and beverage industry, comprising the restaurants, chop bars, snack bars, highway rest stops, fast food and coffee and tea shops, they may operate with the following guidelines. The display of no mask, no entry signage, and ensure that all patrons are wearing masks on entry, mandatory wearing of masks and protective clothing by kitchen staff, provision of soap and running water, and hand sanitizers and disinfectant gels with paper towels at public areas, and the guests should be reminded when entering and leaving to wash their hands as well as use the sanitizers. They are also required to limit the number of guests for dining to 50% of the current carrying capacity of the venue to ensure that adequate spacing for seating and maintaining social distancing of one meter can be adhered to. Regular disinfection of surfaces must be done where it is inappropriate to use bleach, for instance, for surfaces such as telephones, remote control equipment, door handles, um, buttons on elevators, etc. Alcohol-based sanitizers um, with 70% and above alcohol must be used. When you have to undertake a buffet-style service, you must ensure to have, a staff, to have staff at the food station to serve the guests. You must limit communal handling of serving ladles. And you must change the ladles more frequently, always leaving these items in separate containers. And you must also clean and disinfect the buffet services after each service. The kitchen staff must also always wash their hands with soap and the running water frequently, and we recommend every 15 minutes, and dispose of used paper towels appropriately. With regards to events, His Excellency the President indicated that we could undertake conferences, workshops, and weddings. And under conferences, we also include award ceremonies. For these events, we also have to display the no mask, no entry signage at the venues for these events, provide enough Veronica buckets and tissue and hand sanitizers for the patrons to use. We must strictly adhere to washing of hands before entering the venue, and the ashes must also use hand sanitizers before escorting guests. We must observe strict social distancing of not less than one meter, and a maximum of 50% of the carrying capacity of the venue, or a maximum of 100 persons per event, as directed by His Excellency the President. During for the guidelines for the activities, you need to critically observe social distancing. Tables must be designed, tables which are designed to hold 10 persons should be reduced to 50% capacity. So now the tables must hold a maximum of five persons. And also we must, um, the MCs for the events must undertake demonstrations of the protocols to further educate the patrons at such events. As much as possible, um, sharing of microphones should be limited, and therefore, we request that you have um, several microphones available, which should periodically also be sanitized after each use. Hand sanitizers must be provided on all the tables to afford the patrons to disinfect their hands during the course of the program. 
We must also observe one meter distance between the guests seated at the table as well as between tables um, at the venue. So you have one table and you have one meter spacing to the next table. Only accredited individuals shall manage events during this period. That is corporate event houses and certified professionals by the associations or recognized professional bodies. All event organizers must be duly licensed by the Ghana Tourism Authority. All events shall be time constrained so as not to keep guests for too long a period. There shall also be the presence of a designated health and safety liaison person amongst the organizers of the program. And for the venues which shall be used for such programs, we request that the venues conform to regulatory standards. The venues must have adequate space to afford for the um, COVID protocols to be complied with and must have adequate sanitary adequate sanitary provisions such as washrooms and should have standby janitors to clean and disinfect these washrooms after each use during the period of the event. And also the venues must ensure that there is uninterrupted supply of water during the course of the program. Regarding the service of food and drinks, in order to limit uh, movement and contact, we direct that place, plates must be placed on the guest tables in the course of the program so that guests can carry their plates themselves and obtain service. Guests can also make their own cocktail and drink requests um, through the waiters who will be required to wear gloves and cocktails can be served with disposable cups during the program. The waiters and all service persons must also wear masks. For our tourist sites and attractions, all tourist sites and attractions may apply to the Ghana Tourism Authority to be allowed to open after they have put in place all the precautionary measures. The Tourism Authority will inspect such measures before granting approval. These measures include enough provision of Veronica buckets and tissues and hand sanitizers, positioned advantage points at the entrances in a manner to prevent queuing and, and crowding of people at such entrances. The people in a queue must also stand at least a meter apart in observance of social distancing. Um, strict adherence to the washing of hands before entering the sites and mandatory wearing of face masks during the entire period that you are at the tourist sites. Also, provision of designated isolation areas in these facilities will be available in case that there is any um, issue coming up and somebody needs to be isolated. A maximum of 100 persons at a time will be allowed to visit such tourist sites approved to operate. With respect to our nightclubs and drinking bars, they will continue to remain closed because we all recognize the mode of socialization in nightclubs and drinking bars. Usually, these nightclubs and drinking bars are small areas, and we gather to drink over long periods and chat and enjoy ourselves. We cannot do this during this period. So our nightclubs and drinking bars, including the nightclubs and drinking bars in hotels, will remain closed. 
Accommodation facilities are opened subject to the safety precautions and protocols in place right from the beginning of the um, imposition of restrictions. We know that our hotels were exempt. They could operate, but most of them closed because of the lack of patronage. So now as we are easing up, those who seek to open uh, can operate, but they must ensure that they comply with the precautionary measures and all the safety protocols. We strongly advise that the at-risk group, that is the aged, those with underlying conditions such as diabetes and hypertension, should limit their participation in these activities and visits to tourist sites. Thank you very much. This is, um, in summary, the guidelines for the hospitality and tourism sector at this point in time, further to the address of His Excellency the President. Honorable Minister, thank you for your presentation. Colleagues, we're going to take your questions now. Uh, as we do always, you can uh, come in pairs to the microphone area, and then we'll be happy to take your questions at this point. I see CTTV. I see Media General. OK, so let's go. Kojo, let's start with you. All right, good morning. My name is Kojo Ajman from City TV. Um, I want to know the guidelines for um, people in the hotel and then at tourism sector, how they can apply for the three billion package you spoke about. And then also the churches and then other religious bodies have formed a task force to police these guidelines. Are we going to see same in the tourism, I mean, for the tourism um, players? And also, how are small hoteliers, like people who have um, staff capacity below 90, 90, how can they assess the NBSSI um, facility? Thank you. Thank you, Kujo. So my Please help me with the mic. No, don't touch it. Yes. Thank you. So my name is Sarah uh, from Media General. I think Kujo began with the first question I want to add, but I'll add a few things. I wanted to find out the monitoring and uh, of this adherence because we know all the easing has been done in all the sectors. So with the tax force, we want to know how, how they are going to share to ensure that they monitor all these tourism uh, sectors under the, in the ministry to ensure that these things are done. I also want to find out, um, she was mentioning limiting the number of guests to 50% capacity. I or, want a a or a maximum of 100. Or a maximum of 100. We know some uh, facilities or guest centers, or let's say the conference center that takes more than um, 500 or 600. So if you say 50% capacity, then we would have the assumption that. No, 50% capacity or a maximum of 100. The so, two go together. Or yes. a maximum of 100. Yes. Yeah. So if your 50% is up to um, 100 or gets to 100, you terminate there. You can't go beyond 100. Even if you have a 10,000 capacity, correct, yes. madam? Yes. Even if you have 10,000 capacity, where ordinarily 50% would have been 5,000, you can't use the 50%. The maximum you can have is 100. Okay, and then finally, just tell us the, who qualifies for what and the, in the assessing the stimulus package. Very Thank well. you. Very well. I'll take another batch of two. Colleagues, another batch of two. I see EIB. Any takers? Yes, sir. Okay, my name is Eric. I work with Star FM. Um, for the churches, we understand 
maximum of 100, but they are to have worship for an hour. Yes. And that ends it. For the event organizers and persons who want to hold award ceremonies and the likes, is there a duration for them as well? Because we didn't hear that, oh, it's an unlimited amount of time as far as they meet 100. And so we want that clarif clarification. And then on the hood, uh, nightclubs and drinking bars, we want to know what went into the decision not to allow them to operate because a lot of the arguments that have come forth is that we can limit the number of persons who go into these places and the livelihoods of some of these individuals are going down as well and so what went into the decision not to allow drinking bars and nightclubs operate when all other events are operating at less capacity and we could do the same for them honorable minister i'll just broaden that question as well um to say what went into the decision to to stop places that sell alcohol, um, including nightclubs and drinking bars, because there's a connection with the alcohol, including nightclubs and um, drinking bars from uh, operating. Do I have any other takers? Okay, so let's have the podium sanitized and then the rubber be The first question, the first question. I'm sorry, I'm not taking notes of the questions today. The first question again. Yes, could you? What was the first question? Just shout it out to me. Okay, okay. We needed to have that. Here are some preventive measures to consider as we fight coronavirus. Um, thank you very much. The first question was in respect of the disbursement of the 3 billion facility. The 3 billion facility is an arrangement that the Ministry of Finance is uh, making with a selected number of banks to make available um, 3 billion Ghana CDs to the industry players, that's the larger um, businesses in the economy to assess. And we are saying that our tourism and hospitality players will also have access to that three billion to support their activities. Similar to the SME facility of 600 million Ghana cities, which is going to the entire SME sector. The players within our industry will also assess that facility. And the Ghana Tourism Authority is actually supporting our industry operators on the processes to assess um, the 600 million. And when the 3 billion also comes on stream, they will support our operators to assess that as well. With respect to policing of the restrictions, the Ghana Tourism Authority has regional offices all across the country and they have inspectors, and they are going to work together with the district assemblies to ensure compliance with the guidelines. And for people who are going to organize events, they will be required to notify the Ghana Tourism Authority prior to the event, so that the authority can make arrangements to monitor the program. 
and they will also be required to provide the authority with information of the patrons who participated in the event. So the Ghana Tourism Authority will keep that database of all the people who attend these programs so that in the event an issue comes up, the contact tracing can take place. Regarding the access to the NBSSI facility, I believe that I have explained that already. And also, somebody also asked about monitoring compliance, and I have answered that. Who qualifies for the stimulus package? The NBSSI has come out with all the guidelines for accessing the facility. So, as I indicated, the Ghana Tourism Authority is supporting our industry players to comply with the guidelines, go through the processes, and assess the facility. In respect of time limits for events, we did not specify a time limit for events, but we indicated that um, event organizers should um, undertake the programs under a time constraint, um, under time constraints, which means that we should not allow the program to travel for too long. I know um, a question will be asked that church services are supposed to last for one hour. Church services are supposed to last for one hour because they are undertaking social distancing and all their members may not be able to attend the service. If it's done for an hour and the first batch of members leave, another batch of members can also come for a service so that um, within a space of three or four hours, they can attend to all the members of their congregation. But for a corporate event, it's a one-off event. So even if it takes place over a two-hour period and it's done, that's it, it's done, and everybody goes away. And we get the records of all the um, people who participated, and the database is kept by the Ghana Tourism Authority. In respect of nightclubs and drinking bars, we appreciate the fact that um, that's also a business that um, people derive their revenues from and their livelihoods from. But we are confronted by a pandemic which is impacting our health as well as the economy. And His Excellency the President and the Tax Force team take all these issues into consideration in coming out with activities that should be restricted and activities that can take place. For now, the indication is we should hold off on the operations of nightclubs and drinking bars. Um, because we all recognize um, the constraints, the mode of operation of nightclubs and drinking bars. You may say that they can restrict um, the participation to a hundred persons or a fifty persons as is being done for others. But the activity that takes place in a nightclub, you sit there, you are drinking and you are talking and as you are talking, the droplets are coming out and you are sitting there for hours. And um, we also know that drinking a lot of alcohol also impacts your immune system. And this is a time that we are trying to build our immune system to fight the pandemic. So several considerations have gone into the decision that for now, we hold off on um, operating the nightclubs and drinking bars. You can have a bottle of beer in your home um, every now and then. So you can still enjoy um, some of that. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Grateful, if there are takers for another batch of questions, I'll be happy to take them now. But colleagues, let me also draw your attention to a couple of things. You may want to talk to the doctors about the effect of alcohol on your immune system. At this time when we are asking people to boost their immune systems. You may also want to talk to them about what alcohol does to your senses and therefore your ability to socially distance and all of the other requirements. Um, I think, like Mr. Sidon Ketia says, I'm not a surgeon, so I want you to talk to the doctors <laughs> about uh, that as well. And then secondly, 
Uh, even though a specific time has not been mentioned for those who are organizing events and we are saying they should work within time constraints, you notice that if you are wearing a mask, there are guidelines for how long people should be in a mask. And those hours um, will also be a good guide uh, to apply at this point in time. Yes, okay. madam. My name is Bridget Ayokomati, Metro TV. Um, I want to know, um, after the year of return, the be Beyond the Return was introduced. And what has become of that initiative? And how are you going to ensure uh, effective uh, how do you ensure that the social distancing directive are complied at the beaches? Noted. Yes, sir. Good morning, Honorable. My name is Joshua Smith. Three questions. Can you quantify the actual effect of the pandemic in the hospitality sector? And then my second question is, any specific plans to help uh, to help turn around the domestic tourism. And then the last one is, in events where industry players flout the guidelines and directives you've given, what will be done to them? Thank you. Three questions packed in one. Uh, is there another taker? You want to come back to the podium? Please feel free. Um, if I don't get any other tickets after this one, then uh, I'll be advising the Honorable Minister to wrap up after she gives her final responses. And my last one. Um, Go ahead. The minority in Parliament raised concerns about the revenue generated from the year of return. Um, can you share some insight? What, 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 what's their concern specifically? Their concerns, they doubted the revenue generated. <laughs> they doubt it? Yes. Okay. Thank you, madam. And then I'll take the final question. Yes. Thank you very much. I think um, with her question, what I want to ask is... Madam, you've not introduced yourself to us. You know all of us, but you don't want to introduce yourself. My music, John. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Minority Caucus of Parliament um, officially petitioned the Auditor General to conduct a special audit into the expenditure of the amount of 280.3 million Ghana cities allocated for the provision of food and water under the coronavirus alleviation um, program. Yeah, uh, what do you make of this um, petition that they made? Uh, thank you, let me give a quick reaction to that one and then I invite the Honorable Minister on the minorities petition uh, to the Auditor General. If you read Article 187 of the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, it talks about when general audits are conducted. For anybody who has done basic accounting and auditing, the financial year usually will have to end, and then the one who is executing the task will prepare his accounts, and then the auditor will come in and audit. In Ghana, when government ministries, departments, and agencies that are doing whatever it is, finish their work. They prepare their accounts at the end of the financial year, which accounts are audited by the Auditor General. Um, Section 16 of the Audit Service Act says, in addition to this audit, the Auditor General may also conduct a special audit. As we speak, the COVID-19 response program is still ongoing. All of you are here because the program is still ongoing, interventions are being made, the activities are ongoing. It's not being completed. The accounts for the 2020 financial year, as I'm sure you are all aware, are nowhere near close to preparation. It would be prudent for all of this exercise to be completed, for the accounts to be put together, for the Auditor General to do a standard audit, and if he believes there's a reason to go further to do um, a special audit may go further. Within that context, I think we can all understand how premature uh, this call for a special audit, when the program has not even ended, uh, comes across. But as we have said over and over again, it is increasingly becoming clear that our colleagues in the minority always look for an opportunity to uh, raise some controversy in a hope to distract us from the 
COVID-19 response program itself, but we will not be distracted. Honorable Minister. My attention was drawn to the fact that I didn't sanitize my hands, so. The first question was in respect of beyond the return. The ministry initiated the beyond the return project to leverage on the gains of the year of return. It's a 10 year project um, dubbed a decade of African Renaissance for the period 2020 to 2030. So it's a 10 year project. Initial activities were to commence this year, but in view of the COVID-19, it has delayed implementation of activities. And we have also um, needed to redesign how the initial activities can happen. Before the end of this month, we are going to do a formal launch of the pillars of the Beyond the Return. There are several pillars that the project stands on. So we'll launch and explain those pillars to the general public as well as the international community. And for this year, we are redesigning our programs so that most of it will be in the form of virtual activities to allow the diaspora to participate in it whilst we overcome this pandemic and look forward to the year 2021 where we can actually have people coming down to participate in programs of Beyond the Return. In respect of compliance with the directives and sanctions for breach, there has been um, a law that has been passed setting out the sanctions when you breach um, um, these restrictions. And these sanctions will apply for anyone who breaches um, these guidelines. And I'll indicate also that we need to be each other's keeper because these protocols and precautionary measures are in our collective interest. So if you visit a place and you realize that the facility is not complying with the protocols. Please do well to report to the Ghana Tourism Authority. There is a call center and the authority will provide us with the numbers to ensure that you can contact them and give them information in respect of facilities that are not complying with the directives and then some action can be taken. But the Ghana Tourism Authority um, officials, together with officials of the um, district assemblies, will also be visiting and monitoring compliance. Improvements in domestic tourism. Definitely, we are working on a program to improve domestic tourism because our borders are closed. There isn't going to be much um, incoming international travel during this um, period. We don't anticipate any significant improvements in international travel until the end of this year. So for this year, our target is to improve domestic tourism. So we are going to work hard to push our see Ghana, wear Ghana, feel Ghana agenda. And then um, we believe that Ghanaians will buy into it and let us travel and see our country and fall in love with our country. 
because it is when we build on our domestic tourism that we can also have something to say to the international tourists to also come and visit our country and see all that is good about our country. And in this respect, we will also be appealing to our hotels, guest houses, and lodges that during this period that the patronage is low and they are not getting any inter international travelers coming in, they should all